Back now at 819 with more of our special series, How to Live to 100. This morning, we're focusing on the science of longevity. Reaching the century mark sounds tantalizing, but is it possible for everyone? Here's NBC's chief medical editor, Dr. Nancy Snyderman. There are approximately 70,000 centenarians living in the United States today. And some scientists say that the first person who will live to see their 150th birthday has already been born. But who are these centenarians going to be? And can we increase our chances of becoming one of them? The science of aging is becoming really popular because there's so much more out there as a consumer to take control of their health and manage their aging. In 2009, three scientists won the Nobel Prize for their research on telomeres, perhaps one of the most exciting developments on the aging forefront. Telomeres are structures on the tips of chromosomes that shorten as people age. Think of them like the plastic tips on a shoestring. People with shorter telomeres are more likely to develop illnesses and die earlier. The science is far from complete, but some laboratories have seized on this opportunity and are offering tests that measure a person's telomere length. SpectraCell Laboratories is the only lab in the United States to offer telomere testing. The cost? $290. It can serve as a wake-up call for some people. It, it's a measure of how well you are aging on the inside. So for some people, it can tell them that maybe they're aging faster than they expect and maybe they can make some major lifestyle changes. Hi, Howard. I decided to be my own guinea pig and with a simple blood test, see what my telomeres had to say about me. I hope I slide out at home plate. That's all I'm asking for. <laughs> but if our telomeres are short, is there a way to make them longer? That's where Dr. Gil Atzman and his team at the Aging Lab at Albert Einstein College of Medicine are focusing their research. But they caution that the science is still trying to catch up to people's hopes. Why is everyone looking to telomeres as this new exciting frontier in medicine? People think that it can serve as a biomarker for prediction of how long they're going to live. But like prediction, it can be to this side or this side. SpectraCell believes their test is for real. It does not tell you when you're going to die or how long you have to live. It just tells you how well you're aging and helps you manage that. Is it safe to say that this is an extraordinarily exciting development in the lab, but it is not ready for public use? Yes. We don't have enough information to make it accurate for uh, prediction. But the future is there. The future is there. With that in mind, I'm ready to get my result. Like any good parent, I just have one wish. I want to predecease my children. That's it. The rest is all a gift. Mm, that's true. So how did she do? Well, Dr. Tanya Berens Benenson, an internist and chief medical, medical officer here at NBC Universal, is here to give Nancy her results. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Tanya. Ready? So, Tanya, so, so, uh, you don't know what don't the results know. are, and so we're going to put them up on the monitor as you explain, Tanya, how uh, Nancy did. Okay, here we go. All right, so Nancy is the red box, and the black line is the average telomere length uh, per age. So if you look at her box and you track it over to the green dot, that's her actual age based on her telomere length. So, so well, I'm 70 right now, even though I'm 59. Let, I'll make you feel better. There's a, there's a variance here, 8 to 10 percent error, actually, with, when you get older. So if you go, it's plus or minus 7 years. So your range really is 63 to 77 with an average of 70. Mm -hmm. But your telomeres are shorter than someone average of your same age. Which means that she's more likely to have a shorter life expectancy. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's Nancy. sobering. Well, I think if I... I mean, look, it's a variable. I could get hit by a bus this afternoon. Please don't. But, thank you. But th what's interesting to me, looking at that, is that I'm probably the first in my generation to really be um, affected by everything environmental. I'm a fast food kid. I grew up around cigarette smoke. You know, uh, I wasn't perfect in college. I've had, you know, some excess alcohol in but my past. But you work out. You eat but, healthy. You're you very... know, I'm not stupid. Every one of those little things takes a hit. Mm. So that, to me, is 
says you can override your genes, you can override environmental factors. So perhaps even though I've cleaned up my act since then, I'll live a pretty good life now. There's still room for improvement. There definitely is because you know your genes are set, but how your genes are translated and transcripted, you have an effect with your lifestyle choices. Well, on that point, then you talk about what you can do: ask for nutritional profile tests, take your medications, mm -hmm. exercise, decrease body fat, meditate, reduce stress. You know that last point and, maybe it, adding. Well, the stress is huge, and I must tell you, this doesn't shock me. No, nope. it's it's sobering it to me. me though. It's it's sobering to me, and I wish it weren't what it is. But I can't tell you that I'm absolutely shocked. I I expected it to not get a great result, and to sort of say, tell myself to get my act together. Okay, but does that mean are you? I mean, the Sleep, question is for two hundred dollars, ninety dollars. Anyone can have this test. It's a special and, test, and, yeah. and so the question is. Is it worth it? And are you? Do you think it was worth it for you to now know this sobering number? Nancy? Yeah, this to me is a little bit like getting a stress test or a CT angiogram. It's a component. Now fix it. Let's check back a year later and see if I can make Great it better. Great right. later. Right. We'll do that. Clean <laughs> up my act, babe. <laughs>